Alrighty, Mr. Gatekeeper here. I want to give a shout out to BRB Electronics. Working a new camera. <laughs> a lot of you probably saying it's about dang time. Well, anyway, I don't know how loud I got to talk and everything on the camera. But, uh, basically a buddy of mine sent this uh, amplifier to me. It is a Skywave DX350. He was having some uh, issues with some reflect. And uh, also the amplifier wasn't keying on all of his radios. There were some radios it would key on. And I think there was a radio, I believe, in one of his vehicles it wouldn't key, etc., etc. But before I get started with this video, I want to talk for a second. I want to attempt to put something in perspective if you'll be willing to listen to me for a second. I'll try not to make it too long, but I want to try to put something in perspective and of course it'll be from my point of view and my beliefs. To me it doesn't matter what type of amp builder that you are out here these days. If you're one who builds pure type accepted amplifiers or if you build broadbanded amplifiers, low noise amplifiers, or, or, or who builds non-RF related amplifiers. I have to say he or she, because there's a lot of female amp builders out there, believe it or not. He or she really has an image of their self, and we may call it ego. Okay, you can call it ego. You have an image of yourself. And of course, this image really comes from the amount of knowledge we've gained and experience since doing what we do. I myself, being an ant builder, probably going on about, I think, seven years now, I believe. I've learned how to pretty much put other ant builders' personalities egos or who they seem to be as a person completely to the side when I'm looking at their work or watching their videos. I guess with me having a love for this hobby so deeply that's grown as deep as it is, just me just being a hobbyist in heart, I enjoy, absolutely enjoy seeing all these different pictures and videos of the way other ant builders put things together. I just love to see the way they do it from their point of view, you know, from their corner. To me, it's almost like we're all artists painting our own picture, you know, and I, and I, I enjoy all the art. No, you know, I'll admit there's some art I see that I, <laughs> that, I, that, I that I may not absolutely, completely, 100% love, but it's cool to see the different perspectives people have and how they put these things together and as many of you already know that know me I don't play a lot in social media and a lot of it's probably got to do with I've been so backed up for so long I'm just now at the tail end of really getting a hold on things when it comes to backed up work and I never never take a part in bashing other builders and if I see something with a build that I don't agree with I'll always try to point it out in like the nicest way that I possibly can in the video. In retrospect, when I see something that I like, I personally don't care what type of reputation the builder has. I don't even let anything about that personal builder affect my physical judgment with my eyeballs. <laughs> When I'm looking at work that's sitting in front of me or I'm looking in the picture or another video. If an amplifier is impressive to me, honestly, I'm going to admit it. Regardless if someone may look down on me for doing it, just because of the reputation that builder may have with certain groups. I ain't talking about just Facebook groups, just groups in general. Because honestly, why should I have to act like I don't like something? Because I'm scared of how other people are going to view me for saying that. 
You know, that's not the type of world we're really supposed to live in, even though it is. You know, it, it reminds me a lot of back when I was in school. And I, you know, I hung out with the most popular people in the school, but I may have had this girl I liked, but since she didn't hang out with all the popular people, I had to keep it to myself because I was scared people were going to say something to me. You know, something like that. You know, you know what I'm saying? Well, maybe a lot of you understand where I'm coming from, and may, maybe some of you just flat out don't care. But hey, it is what it is. It's the beauty of free will and the human race and the world that we live in. But one last thing. I understand there are many different types of operators out there. Some absolutely need linear amplifiers and need to be linear as possible at all times. Some just want to be clean and not spurious and, you know, be splatter monsters. And others want to be as nasty and mean sounding as, as they possibly can. I mean, there's different flavors for different folks. Some guys talk only on AM and that's it. Some talk on only sideband. And others like me, they talk on AM, sideband, and FM. In my eyes, I try to cater to the operator's way of operation when I'm doing certain stuff like custom builds and stuff like that. And But the reality of it all in this day of time, it really comes down to money. Not everybody can afford that perfect amplifier. You know, that perfect, completely biased with hardcore, you know, real deep circuitry. You know, very expensive, type accepted, you know, with all the bells and whistles. And then there again, there's people that can. You know, the way I look at it, I don't see it as right or wrong like some people do. To me, I just see it as preference. I just kind of wanted to get all that out before I even started to look at this particular amplifier because I'm going to give my honest opinion. This circuitry right here is impressive to me. This circuitry right here that I'm looking at is very neat. It's very cool. It's impressive. It's professional. I know there's a lot of guys out there that would look down on it for, you know, being in a plastic box. But man, there's many different arguments that you can get in with, with different aspects of amplifiers and this and that. I myself have built small amps in plastic box in the past, and I know where there's a lot of them right now that people are still using them. You know, I, I personally am not a big fan about building anything bigger than a two transistor amp in a plastic box but I mean it, it, when it comes down to it it's preference you know but there are arguments that can be talked about but when it comes to the circuitry right here I'm very impressed because I've always been a big fan of regulated AB biasing really ever since I was taught how to do it when I first started doing this stuff and I was taught wrong and I was sitting there biasing amplifiers and they wasn't even biased. They were still class C, but I was taught wrong. When I finally learned how to start going in the right direction with it and actually learned about all this stuff, about what amplifiers are, what biasing is, you know, I knew the best you could possibly have is a biased amplifier that's regulated that has some sort of temperature tracking something to back down the current when the heat rises to try to keep you from thermal runaway and this and that i have to say this is the type of work right here that you would find in a lot of more advanced ham type amplifiers so for this to be sold as it is on the you know kind of geared toward the frequency range that it is it's amazing that one man could design this you know get a design it on the computer get a board made himself to where it's easily mass produced it's really cool stuff I'm, I, I, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed and like I swastik gave that big speech but see here we go again 
this right here it, it may only be for certain people it may only be for certain operators you know this may not be good for that guy that wants to be on a big mall that wants to you know have a big class c hammer but that guy that wants to be linear that wants to enjoy some good linear ssb use and just wants to be linear and sound good as he possibly can on all band i mean on all modes of operation this is a great amplifier for that and uh just seeing the way it uh works output wise and everything it, it pretty much does what any toshiba two transistor amp d will do i'm getting pretty much right there about uh, 300 to 350 watts PEP and right there a little bit over a hundred bird just hitting it with my bench radio and that's about what any two pill will do it takes a star 350 that's what it'll do so it, it's doing the output it can it's really neat it's, you know it's got fuse protection but you can actually take this fuse completely out and it still has uh, reverse polarity protection right here so uh, Hey, a lot of you may hate me for saying it, but like I said, you've got to remember though, the word preference is a powerful word when it comes to equipment like this. This may be for some people, but for other people, it may not be, you know, interesting to them. But to me, it is a very interesting amplifier in a way it's, the, just the way the actual circuitry is built. It's very impressive, it's really cool stuff. So basically, there again, it's kind of so, I just knocked the camera, didn't I? It's kind of so unique, the keying circuit. This keying circuit, which I have had to draw a schematic of, I don't know if all that will get in the camera. I'm about to get used to using this camera right here which I had to draw a schematic of is definitely nothing like anything I've personally ever seen. I now understand what, what's going on with it. It's basically designed so that you can hook this amplifier up to certain radios that basically you can send a voltage out of the radios to key an amplifier. So it's designed to take DC voltage or RF voltage pretty much. But for some reason, it I could only find like one radio here that would actually key this amplifier. And all of my other, like my bench radio, my hot radio, all the radios I use every day would not key it. So um, he asked me to go ahead and do a modification to make sure this thing can be keyed by any amplifier. And like I said, the circuitry in this thing is so unique when it comes to the keying circuit. I had to just get in here and do my own thing you know I really I really did have to because uh, uh, the way a lot of the, the, this ain't really put together like a Texas star where you have a lot of solder pads to where you can easily get to something without having to take the board out a lot of these components you see in here you have to remove the board to get to them easier so you won't be trying to damage the board you know trying to get certain components out and uh, but I got it working, and that's you know to me that's all that matters. This thing is keying now perfectly. Uh, SSB delay is now. I had to rewire the SSB delay because basically this relay right here is running on five volts. Okay, it's doing it backwards from the way that most of us do our keying circuits. We normally give a relay a ground with our keying circuit. This is doing it backwards. This is giving the relay a positive with this key. In, and this key in circuit consists of two MOSFETs. Okay. And the, pretty much the way I can understand it from, from, from drawing the diagram and studying it, one MOSFET is given ground to the other MOSFET for it to actuate to give the relay five volts the SSB delay is putting a delay for the second MOSFET delaying it okay I've got it set up now to where I've got an external relay in here that's now driving the main relay 
which you know ain't that uncommon you'll see this done in like sweet 16s and other amplifiers I've seen out there they'll have uh, driver relays or sometimes they'll have a relay uh, that will handle the input and another relay to handle the output and you'll see some RM Italy amps like that and stuff like that too but uh so I got it working his other issue was he was complaining about some input reflect and I think he may have sent this back if I remember correctly I think he got it with the uh, Maycoms or Motorola 454s in it he sent it back and it came back with Toshiba's and he was kinda concerned with the input SWR the input reflect it did have you know it wasn't too bad but you know I just regardless I you know did what I could to improve it without getting in here and changing the wrap pattern or trying to change the input L circuit or anything like that I just simply put a trimmer in there as best as I could and I added just about 10 more pico fared so it brought it down to pretty much about a quarter watt of input reflect which is very acceptable for a two transistor amplifier sometimes it's hard to even get them that low in some uh, situations so it's it's very acceptable now very acceptable no problem at all so uh, thank you for hanging in there with me bud I've checked the bias voltage it's it's where it's supposed to be I checked uh, the current too just for the fun of it I broke this um, pretty neat the way he has this back here where you basically can there's a jumper you can suck the solder up off the jumper and it takes away the uh, DC current to the to the trans uh, transformer to the transistors and uh, that's that's a way that you can test your bias current too so I done that just for the heck of it. I was just kind of want to see what the amp was doing regardless and um, instead of using a relay to give the transistors bias is pretty much using inductors and blocking capacitors to give the transistors bias like you may see uh, another amplifier that I've seen that does it this way I've done it this way myself a few times a lot of times I'll just use a mechanical relay but um, the very first time I ever seen this done this way was with a B biased X-Force uh, amplifier um, a TNT that's the first time I ever seen using inductors to uh, block AC and using capacitors to block DC and basically using the main relay to send your DC on your AC voltage line to get the DC to your transistors so that's the way it's done on here too with pretty much a VK200 uh, inductor here which is probably giving it a little bit over 25 plus uh, uh, Michael Henry's to uh, yeah to keep the uh, excuse me I meant to say it's using two of them one on this side of the uh, relay leg and then one on this side and there's all proper uh, filter and there's filter capacitors all over the box it's uh, it's, it's really cool circuit really cool circuit and I know it costs more to do this to do all this right here it costs more you know if, if it was more cost affected I'm sure you would see Texas Star doing circuits like this right here regulated bias with temperature tracking it costs more this you know it costs more for these types of bells and whistles so it is what it is so hopefully you can see that good in the camera I am going to now and by the way, the transmit LED, I didn't have to do any kind of modifications to that to get that working. All right, let's see how we can do this now. That may be kind of hard to get to. Let me see if I can zoom. It's probably not a good view like I usually give but it'll work so we're on the 500 watt slug we're on 14 and a half volts that's where I like to usually keep it ok 
Okay, we're on the bench radio. Dead Ken, a watt, I believe. I'm gonna look here. Now, let me turn the amp off. Yeah, we're Dead Ken, one watt. Alright. So, one watt, 500 watt slug. We're reading the middle position. So, we're getting close to. A little bit under 50 watt dead key. Oh, a little bit over 100 bird. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good forward swing on the RMS meter. Here's the PEP. Oh, right there at 350 watts. I mean, that's what a Texas star will do, too, man. That's uh that's that's what you're looking for right there. Just hitting it with the bench radio. This radio is only driving this amp with about 18 watts PEP, right around 18 watts PEP, four watts RMS. I hadn't actually looked on uh the website for this to see what the typical drive that he requires for this. But I, I, I know it's more than what I'm giving it, you know. I'm, I'm pretty pretty sure it's more than what I'm giving it because you can still drive this this amplifier with a little bit more. But if it was mine, I would probably just drive it like this right here, you know. Just, just run it like this right here. I mean, you, of course, you can get it up 500 watts, probably get it up no problem. If I hook the uh, hot radio up to it right now, it's, I'm sure to do about 200 bird. And I will hook the hot radio up to it just to do a quick key. I just, I just want to see what the RMS is going to come up to. Do a little bit past 350 watts. Now the only thing I don't really completely understand is why there isn't feedback circuits on this amplifier. But I am not going to add them. I normally do add them on amplifiers I find that don't have feedback circuits on them. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. I may actually shoot the uh, owner, uh, excuse me, the maker of this amp just to ask to see what his, see, you know, what his point of view on feedback circuits, if he'll, if he'll uh, share that with me. I'm just kind of curious of why he did not add them on here. You normally will see some sort of feedback, uh, some sort of neutralization with transistor uh, amplifiers so uh, but you know a lot of that does have to do too if it's also going to be used in the wide frequency range so maybe that has something to do with it I don't know I like to add them on there regardless you never know what the person is going to use the amp for you never know where they're going to take it up the frequency range you know band down you, you just never know all right, now I do need to show the input reflect. Where are you? <laughs> I'll get the hang of this. That should be good enough. All right, here's the input reflect. That is a five watt slug in reverse. That right there is one, and that's a half. It was a little bit under, a little bit under a half before I added some capacitance to it. Do dia, do dia. So it's pretty much dropped a quarter of a watt. Alrighty, so let's go back right here. Where are you? I need to get all that nasty stuff back there against that wall move that's where the my, my ceiling actually fell about a year ago i was out here working my dang ceiling just fell on me can you believe that we had had a real rainy summer or winter i can't remember what it was but the moisture got up there to it they just didn't build this house the way they really should as good quality as they should have done back in the days but uh yeah the ceiling bowed in on me and fell 
Hit me right in my dang head. Alright. We're gonna hook up the hot radio. It may not increase much PEP. I just kinda wanna see RMS wise. Alright. Turn the uh, Hot radio on. Let's make sure it's uh, working good. Oh yeah, oh yeah. All right, that is the hot radio. Oh yeah, look at that. Straight there at a perfect 200 bird. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Right there, the perfect 200 bird. P P. Oh, oh yeah, I've done more. See, whenever you do see an increase of PEP, when I go from my hot rate, my, my bench radio to my hot radio, that's because there's still a good bit of, uh, there's still more headroom in the amp, meaning the amplifier can, 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 can produce more dB gain, pretty much. There's still more, because a lot of times you'll see me sit here and go from both radios and the peak stays the same but the RMS comes up okay I know it's very confusing you know there's a big scientific reason for all that which I can't exactly give you right now especially I need to get in a god dang bed but um, when you do see an increase that means the amplifier has more headroom in it more you know it, 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 meaning it can be driven a little harder it's still got more amplification to give you and you'll see an end a, 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 a PEP increase just like you saw now do that's right there pretty much 450 watts maybe 425 so there she is man thanks for hanging in there with me uh, bud sorry it took so long we got you Skywave ready to go And guess what? It's a quinky dink. I got a Skyway 500 over here to look at. Next, well, not next, but soon. Appreciate y'all hanging in there with me during this recording. Let me see if I can't get it off this camera to the computer. The old gatekeeper said that. Thanks for hanging in there with me, y'all. 27 minutes. Bye bye bye.